Hey, seventh grade. I am here uh, today to talk about multiplying and dividing rational numbers. We're going to do them together because they fit together so so nicely. Um, let's see. The only vocab that I need you to worry about are multiplicative inverses and reciprocals. So multiplicative inverses and reciprocals. If you can go ahead, you can just make one heading that says 5, 3, multiplying rational numbers, 5, 4, dividing rational numbers. And then the only vocab you need to do is multiplicative inverses and reciprocals. Go ahead, pause your video, and come back when you're done. All right, so multiplicative inverses mean and reciprocals they're really one vocab word because they both mean the same thing so multiplicative inverses and reciprocals are when you have a fraction so we have four fifths the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal both the same thing are going to be essentially you're taking your numerator and it becomes your denominator your denominator becomes your numerator so I usually say you flip the fraction what happens when you do that is you end up with one for your answer so if you have come up with the correct multiplicative inverse or reciprocal when you multiply across the top and the bottom, you should end up with the same thing. So 4 times 5 is 20, 5 times 4 is 20, 20 over 20 is 1. So multiplicative inverse and reciprocal mean that you're going to take your fraction and you're going to flip it over. And if you multiply that times your original fraction, you will get 1. That comes to um, be very important when we are dividing rational numbers. We're going to go ahead, though, and do the examples for multiplying rational numbers first. Uh, so with example one, we have two-thirds times three-fourths. I am going to do a little something I like to call cross-reducing here. So when we have something... So it can be the numbers exactly, like in this case, we have a 3 in the top and the bottom. But it can also be a factor, which we also have. So 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 4. So it could either be the number itself or one of its factors. If those are in the top and the bottom of your fractions, so in the numerators and the, the denominators, they actually cancel each other out. So when we have a 3 here and a 3 here, we can say 3 divided by 3 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So those 3s will change to be 1s. Our 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 4 two times. So we have now two brand new fractions that we are multiplying. You're going to multiply across the top. 1 times 1 is 1. Multiply across the bottom. 1 times 2 is 2. So our final answer here is one half. If you had not cross reduced, so say we didn't realize we could cross reduce, what will happen is you're going to multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then you'll have to reduce. So if you didn't cross reduce within your problem, you're going to have to reduce at the end. So here we would say, well, we can divide this by 6, and we can divide this by 6. Please, please, please remember that you always have to divide by the same number on the top and the bottom. That's the only way if you try to multiply by a different number on the top, or divide, I keep saying multiply. If you try to divide by a different number on your numerator and your denominator, that, my friends, is an illegal math move. You can't do that. You have to divide by the same number on the top and the bottom. When we do that, we get one half, which I'm sure you'll notice is the if you can see that is the same thing. There we go. Same thing that you got when we cross reduced. So if you don't cross reduce, it's okay. You're going to have to reduce though, and you need to keep going until your fraction is in simplest form. 
which means that the greatest common factor between your numerator and your denominator is 1. That means you're in simplest form and you know you're done. Alrighty, our next example is 4 sevenths times 1 sixth. So here we look for any common factors, and I notice 2 can go into both 4 and 6. So 4 divided by 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, I multiply across the top, 2 times 1 is 2, 7 times 3 is 21, and that is my reduced answer there. Next up, I have a negative times a positive, so remember spun here, negative times a positive, we have unlike signs, so our answer is going to be negative. We know that right away before we even multiply. I highly recommend you write that negative before you start to multiply so you don't forget it. Then I'm going to look for any common factors between my numerator and my denominator so that I can cross-reduce. I notice that 3 goes into 3 and 3 goes into 12. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. No other common factors here, so I can multiply them. 5 times 1 is 5. 4 times 8 is 32. So negative 5 30 seconds for my answer there. Um, again, I highly recommend if you know that your answer is going to be negative, go ahead and write that negative so that you don't forget it. Next up, we have some mixed numbers. So we have 2 and 2 fifths times two and one half. So a common mistake here is to try to multiply our whole numbers and then multiply our fractions. You can't do that because if you tried, you would be multiplying one times two, but you wouldn't be multiplying one times one half, and you would be multiplying two times one, but not two times two fifths. So what we have to do here is make these into improper fractions. So you're going to multiply your denominator times your whole number and then add your numerator. So 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 more is 7. Denominator is the same. Same thing over here. We do 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 more is 5. So we have 5 halves. Now we're going to multiply. I notice I have a 5 in my numerator and my denominator. So those cancel out. I end up when I multiply with seven halves. Now I need to make this a mixed number. So I think about how many times does two go into seven? So two goes into seven three times and there's one left over, which would mean my answer is three and one half. Three and one half. Next up, we have some fractions with variables in them. So some algebraic fractions. We have 2a over b, and we're going to multiply that times b squared over d. So again, I have a common factor here. I can think of um, b squared as being b times b. And I have a b here and a b here. So those b's cancel out. I still have one more b in my numerator. I have no other common factors, so now I can multiply across the top. 2a times b is 2ab, and then I have 1 times d, which is d. So my answer here would be 2ab over d. And that's actually it for section 5.3. I'm going to skip example 6. We'll actually take care of that next year. So um, that's it for 5.3 for the lesson. And now we're going to jump into 5.4. 5.4 involves everything that 5.3 involved with one additional trick. So when you are given uh, division with fractions, this is what you need to remember. Remember, keep, change, flip. So let me show you how this works. Our first 
Oh, actually, first we're just finding um, multiplicative inverses or reciprocals. So that is going to be your chain. No, that's going to be your flip part. Uh, so first, we're just looking to flip negative 3 eighths. Negative 3 eighths, the reciprocal, is still going to be negative. You're going to flip them over. So our reciprocal would be negative 8 thirds. Next up, we have 2 and 1 fifth. Uh, to figure out our multiplicative inverse, first we're going to make this a proper fraction, an improper fraction, sorry. It's currently a mixed number. We're going to make it into an improper fraction by multiplying our denominator times our whole number plus our numerator. So 5 times 2 is 10 plus 1 more is 11. My denominator stays the same. So this mixed number as an improper fraction would be 11 fifths. And then if I'm going to find the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal, I'm just flipping them. So now I have 5 elevenths. Remember that if we multiply these or we multiply these, our answer is going to be 1. Because when I multiply multiplicative inverses or reciprocals, my answer is 1. Okay. Now, on to actually dividing. So we're keep. Bing, we're changing and we're flipping. Our first example here is one thirds divided by five ninths. So keep means that first fraction stays the same. Change means we're going from division to multiplication like we did in five three. And then flip means we're going to find the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal by just moving my denominator to the numerator, my numerator to the denominator. Now I multiply just like we did in 5-3. So I'm sure now you see why I chunk these together and because we're right back to 5-3. So I have a three as a factor here and here. No other common factors, so I multiply across the top multiply across the bottom, and there is my answer, 3 fifths to 1 third divided by 5 ninths. Next, we have 5 eighths divided by 6. So this time we have a whole number. Whenever you run into a whole number and you're working with fractions, you're going to put that whole number over 1. So 6 first is the same as 6. Now I am going to keep change flip. So I keep my first fraction, change it to multiplication, flip my second fraction. I have no common factors, so we can't cross reduce. I get 548 for my answer here. Next, we have some mixed numbers. So next one is negative 7 halves divided by positive 2 and 1 tenth. So the first thing I need to do here is to change my mixed numbers into improper fractions. So I'm going to multiply it and then add, get negative 15 halves, divided by, and again, multiply and then add, so I have 21 tenths. Now I can keep change, flip, look for any common factors, which I have a 2 here and a 2 here. So those would reduce. Um, oh, 3 goes into 15 five times. 3 goes into 21 seven times. And that's it. So next up, I'm going to multiply across the top. Before I do that, though, we had a negative times a positive. So negative times a positive, unlike signs, our answer is going to be negative. Don't forget your negative. Now we multiply 5 times 5 and 1 times 7. And 7 goes into 25 times. So I'm going to have negative 3, and then there would be 4 left over. Denominator stays the same. So my answer there is negative 3 and 4 sevenths. Next up, we have 
some algebraic fractions. So we have 3xy over 4 divided by 2x over 8. So we are going to keep, change, flip. Now I have a 4 here and a 4 here, so I cross-reduce that. These 2s actually cancel out. The x's cancel out, and we are not left with much. We have 3y times 1, which is just 3y. 1 times 1 is 1. So our answer here is a nice, simple 3y. That's all that I'm going to cover in 5.3 and 5.4. I want you guys to try some of each of these. So we are, let me erase this. We are going to do page 213, 15, 230 by threes, and then from 2-4, I want you to do page 218, and I would like you to do 18 to 45 by threes. All right. So when I see you, it'll be the homework review for 5.3 and 5.4. Make sure you complete this assignment, submit it on Redeker before you watch the homework review video. I will see you all guys I will see you guys soon. Have a great day.